You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. I'm Dave Burke. Dave, what do you got to say? A 37-30 win, the first win in the AFC North for the Bengals in the 2022 season. Uh, it has to be an exciting time around that locker room right now. Yeah, and guys are uh, guys are definitely juiced up, and rightfully so. It's a big division win on the road. Um, you know, this this this, uh, this football team, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's there's never ne- never say die. They they don't quit on anything, and uh, to uh, to handle it, handle all the adversity and uh, crowd noise was was definitely a factor. Uh, they were in full throat tonight for sure. I mean, they realized the importance of the football game and. Uh, both teams played played their hearts out. It was a physical physical contest for sure, uh, and to come out with a victory is uh, is well earned and well deserved. There's going to be uh, guys will be sleeping on the plane ride home. I can guarantee you that. All right. Before I start with Joe Burrow, we've got to talk about Trent Irwin getting his first career touchdown. We had him on in the trenches just the other week during the bye, and what a great young man! And so happy to, the success he's had today. Yeah, it was it was great. I mean, he stepped up and uh, and and did a great job. I thought, uh, you know, he uh, he blocked well. He caught the football well. Was rewarded with his first touchdown reception of his NFL career. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan has three touchdowns uh, in receiving. I asked him after the game in the post game show if he'd ever had three touchdown receptions ever at any level, and he said, "Nope, this is a first. So four targets, four catches. 52 yards, three of them going for touchdowns, uh, including a long of 29 yards. And he did uh, he did a lot after the catch. He uh, he was he was great today. I thought he ran the ball hard, and he's always a great uh, blocker and blitz pickup. That's one of his biggest strengths. Uh, that's that's the foundation of his game. And and uh, for him to step up, anybody that went to Vegas and said, yeah, Joe Burrow is going to throw four touchdown passes today, and three of them are going to be to Samaj P. Ryan. And one's going to be to Trent Irwin. That guy's uh, got a new a new uh, mansion on a lake somewhere. <laughs> Dave, one of the guys we've had on in the trenches is Cordell Volson, the rookie left guard. And in that first touchdown P. Ryan had, boy, he shows why the Bengals are so excited about this kid's future because he, he got his block and he got out and got an open space and showed his athleticism getting down there to make key blocks to get P. Ryan in. Yeah, I mean, he showed uh, his ability to run. A big body guy that can get down the football field. Um, I thought, uh, you know, a couple of guys uh, stepped up and and, uh, and 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 made plays uh, as well at the receiver position. Stanley Morgan got a block. Trenton Irwin got a block as well. And uh, and then, of course, Cordell Wilson was was the big body guy down there, just knocking people around. And and that's what it takes. It takes, you know, effort like that. And uh, a, lot, a lot of guys made made plays allowing Samaj P. Ryan to secure the edge and just get inside the pylon. I mean, all three of his touchdowns were just like, just barely getting inside that pylon, but he did it uh, time and time again, guys uh, blocked for him and he took advantage of it and showed balance uh, tight rope in that sideline and getting in the end zone. A lot, a lot of big plays for sure. Bengals success in the second half without Joe Mixon. It sounded like concussion protocol took him out of this game. Yeah, he was uh, he was good though. He came over when I was talking to Samaj and was yelling "player of the game" right here and celebrating with him. So I think I think Joe's going to be okay. But you know, uh, concussion protocol is uh, is something you don't mess with, and you got to make sure that you don't uh, put yourself in jeopardy back out there on the football field uh, until you clear all matters of concussion protocol. So hopefully that'll be the case. You know, the other guy that was enormous today and, and figuratively and, and literally was T Higgins. I mean, targeted 13 times, nine catches, 148 yards. I mean, time and time again, in the middle of the football field, they ran a fade to him, you know, for big yards. Uh, his longest catch of the day was, was 33 yards. Joe Burrow had um, six different players with a catch of 21 yards or more. Hayden Hurst had one for 21, Tyler Boyd for 27. And uh, he had a couple of big catches on that last drive the Bengals had to go up by two touchdowns, two catches for 41 yards. And um, Joe Mixon had a 24-yard catch before he had to bow out. Trent Nerland had a 32-yard reception. Samaje P. Ryan, 29-yard catch. T. Higgins, 33-yard catch. I mean, when you can get those kind of plays out of six different guys and spread the ball around like that, that's big time. And, of course, uh, you know, Joe is big time. 24 for 39, 355 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. You know, the weird thing, Dave, the Bengals are minus seven against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
and they're plus eight against everybody else. I mean, <laughs> if, if if they hadn't, they'd be they'd be sitting at I don't know where they'd be in terms of turnover ratio without the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a, it's a crazy deal, but. You know, the two interceptions that Joe Burrow had were, were deflections, and one was a deflection, one was T.J. Watt as, as L.C.'s blocking him. I mean, he's knocking him to the ground. He's going sideways, and he puts his hands up and catches the football. I mean, the eye-hand coordination to do that and to catch a ball that's coming out of Joe Burrow's hands at that velocity, at that short a distance, is, is unbelievable, and he did it in both games different ways, but he had two interceptions by, you know, leaping catches of, uh, of Joe Burrow throwing the football. It's, it's, it's absolutely uh Crazy, but I thought I thought that LC and uh, Jonah Williams both played well uh, on handling the edge guys, High Smith and Watt. They ended up with uh, two sacks. The Steelers did. The Bengals got two sacks as well, so it was kind of even, Steven there. But I thought I thought the Bengals' offensive line really acquitted themselves well. I thought LC in the rematch stepped up, and 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 so did Jonah Williams. I, I thought those guys uh, deserve you know to take a bow. I thought they they handled things pretty darn well. Over on the defensive side, you talked about in your keys about the H and H boys, Hubbard and Hendrickson having a big game. They both put pressure on. They each got sacks. Uh, I think they each had about three tackles apiece. Uh, they stepped up their game, but also I think it helps when you have a guy like DJ Reader back and you you got a great play from the inside guys on this game. Yeah, I mean defensively, they had they had some big performances. Cam Taylor Britt. Nine tackles, uh, 12 tackles total, nine unassisted. Pratt was all over the field at linebacker, six unassisted tackles, eight tackles on the day. Logan Wilson had eight, five of his were unassisted. Uh, Trey Hendrickson, they gave him credit for, for two sacks, uh, and, uh, or excuse me, two tackles for loss. And, uh, and, he had, and they did give him a t- uh, two sacks as well. So he was the first guy, and, and uh, so I'm not sure if it'll stay that way. But bottom line is both uh, both the H boys put put pressure on the edge, and um, Trey Hendrickson was making life just absolutely miserable uh, for the for the left tackle uh, Dan Moore of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, he was he was in a bad way, and they weren't helping him at all, chipping or anything like that, because they didn't want to sacrifice any of their, their receivers in the route. But I mean, I thought that uh, defensively in the second half they made some adjustments at halftime and. And uh, Lou Anarumo, I, you know, I think maybe the biggest thing was let's just go out there and perform and, and uh, quit making mistakes because, boy, once they uh, once they came out, you know, after halftime, I think they had four straight three and outs uh, to start the second half. It was, okay, three straight three and outs. I'm looking at the stat sheet now. And they had, uh, you know, they had a four-play drive that only netted them six yards, and they kicked a the field goal on fourth down uh, on the short field after the Bengals had, uh, you know, uh, that – interception that Steelers had uh, in the in the uh, in the third quarter and uh, the defense held it to just three points so um, it, it was defensively they stepped up big time you know they had that one drive at the end uh, I'm not saying it was garbage time but they were playing you know very um, you know bend but don't break uh, kind of uh, kind of a defensive philosophy they gave up a nine play 72 yard touchdown drive but uh, it, when when the money was on the line man defensively Three play drive, three play drive, three play drive, four play drive, six play drive of only 27 yards, another four play drive of 20 yards, um, <laughs> four play drive of one yard. So I mean, they just they shut them down. They shut them down up until that that last drive. I mean, they, they got as many drive uh, many yards on that 72 yard touchdown drive as they had for the entire half prior to that. So I thought that uh, defensively stepped up big time when they had to and. Offensively, they go on a 92 and 93 yard touchdown drive in the same game. That is hard to do. I mean, that just doesn't happen in the National Football League. Ten plays, 92 yards, they generate five first downs. Eight plays, 93 yards, another five first downs, and they score touchdowns on both of them. I mean, you know, that that's a lot of plays uh, to to string together and not make a mistake. You know, not get yourself off schedule where you can't finish that drive. Uh, th- those were those were uh were big as well but uh red zone ended up being almost in my mind the deciding factor in this football game as the the Bengals continue to 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 kill it in the red zone they went three for three um every single red zone opportunity they scored three touchdowns and and they were two for two from uh from uh low red zone first and goal and uh on the flip side of it uh the Steelers they were three for five the Bengals held them to 
uh, to two field goals, you know, in the red zone. I thought that ended up being a big difference in the football game as well, Dave. You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. If you're looking for a new career, be sure to check out FirstStarLogistics.com. Dave, we got to jump over to special teams. The Bengals made the choice to bring up Drew Chrisman as let Kevin Huber sit this out. Uh, he delivers three punts, 150 yards, 50-yard average, two inside the 20. But the other thing is Evan McPherson, three for three. And as you know, Chrisman plays a key role in that uh, with, with the snapper hold and the kick. Yeah, there's no doubt in, in his first two punts, um, he, pinned the, 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 he pinned the Pittsburgh Steelers back to the five-yard line. It was almost a safety. Uh, the, the punt went over the returner's head. He mishandled it. Um, gets the ball out of the end zone, but gets tackled at the five-yard line. So, you know, that that was uh, that was one of them. And then on another one, they start at the nine-yard line. Um, so he had two punts that uh, had him backed up inside the 10, putting them on long fields. Uh, so that was uh, that was gargantuan. That was uh, that was a monstrous performance by him. And when you look at it, it was cold. Uh, field conditions weren't great. That field's beaten up. I mean, they played high school football playoff games Friday night. Pitt played there Saturday. Um, they they resotted the, the between the hash marks on uh, Tuesday morning. So I mean that field was uh, was not in the greatest shape. Um, and where they didn't resod, I mean they tried to reseed, and it was like uh, being at the zoo with a bunch of pigeons. I mean the pigeons were all over that football field with that freshly seeded uh, you know uh, divots all over the field that they didn't resod. So uh, it was it was definitely trying circumstances on the road, loud crowd. Chrisman delivered. He delivered big time. There's no no two ways about it. And delivered every area he can deliver. So it was a it was a great opening uh, opening performance for his NFL career. There's no question about it. Cincinnati Bengals win 37-30 over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Move to six and four on the season next Sunday, 1 p.m. kickoff. Tennessee Titans at Nissan Stadium. Dave, that's a, another big game. Another big game, Dave. And uh, I think I'm last. In the locker room, I gotta run here. But you, the, the, the one summation, the final, my final thought on on that this football game coming up with Tennessee, Pittsburgh Steelers want to run it and play great defense. Tennessee Titans play even better defense. They've got a beast of a running back. They even even a bigger guy in Derrick Henry than Najee Harris. So if this was like a scrimmage, getting ready for the Tennessee Titan game, and it's down there in Tennessee. And the other thing, they're not going to be in good mood because the Bengals knocked them out of the playoffs. So. They'll be looking for some restitution there, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a challenge, and uh, Bengals are going to have to rest up a little bit and get ready for the Tennessee Titans and try to go one and zero as many weeks as you can down the stretch. That's the bottom line. Dave, we'll catch you in the trenches this week. We'll let you go catch that bus. You got it. Thank you. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.